Hey guys, Rob Adams here for Adorama, and today we're taking a look at the all new Micro Four Thirds flagship from Panasonic, the long awaited Lumix GH6. Now I am gonna show you some footage out of this baby because I know that's why you're here, but let's take a look at the specs of this bad boy because there are some major notable improvements over the GH5 and this thing is made for cinematographers. The GH6 shoots unlimited 4K 60 video with 422 color sampling at 10 bit internally and you get that same quality going out externally over HDMI. The other big news is that you now have 4K and Cinema 4K at 120 frames per second and standard HD 1080 at 240 frames per second. So it's clear that Panasonic reinvented this GH series camera to make cinematographers and videographers very happy. I mean, these are codecs that you find in some of the heavy hitting cinema cameras on a whole other price level. You're also gonna be pleased to hear that Panasonic has included V-Log in the camera body, so there's no need to buy a separate firmware upgrade to get up to 13 stops of dynamic range. Let's just dive right in, we have a lot to cover here. The GH6 has a brandy new 25.2 megapixel sensor and a new image processor that that doubles the processing speed of its predecessor, adding a bunch of new noise reduction tech. And according to Panasonic, there's an improvement in the color reproduction too. I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this because the GH5 and its cousins, the GH5S and the GH5 Mark II, have been applauded for its color science over the last five or six years. As hoped, there is no record time limit, even at Cinema 4K and 4K 60 422 10-bit, because they've apparently really got the whole heat dissipation thing down. The body of the GH6 is a little bit larger, due in part to a forced cooling mechanism that helps to keep the innards from overheating. So at 5.7K or 6K, you've got 420 10-bit up to 60p, and for you anamorphic shooters, you've got 5.8K 6K, 420 10-bit up to 30 frames per second. Take a look at some of this footage. Now I gotta say for me, one of the biggest ads is the inclusion of Apple ProRes recording. GH6 can capture ProRes 422 and 422HQ in 5.7K recording up to 30 frames per second. This is huge for me since I hate having to conform my footage for post-production editing and this will be a great feature for cinematographers shooting at 24p or 30p who want to speed up their post-production process and get higher bit rates to boot. I was super, super impressed with the slow motion capability of the GH6 at 4K 120. This is not a variable frame rate slow motion. This is true 120 frame per second video, which when recorded plays back in real time and then needs to be slowed down in post. That translates to better quality because the camera isn't processing the slow motion on the card. It's up to you when you want to process it and how in post production. Image stabilization in the GH6 has been improved over the GH5, and the GH5 had stellar 5-axis in-body IS, so this is a major deal. The GH6 offers up to 7.5 stops of optical image stabilization, and that's not even with pairing the body with a lens that has IS, so that's really cool. I purposely didn't use any sort of stabilizer or gimbal on this shoot because I wanted to see how the GH6 IS handled a running gun with various lenses. Now, when it comes to low light, shooting with the GH5 was lacking a little bit, but any Micro Four Thirds format sensor with IS isn't exactly known for its low light, high ISO capability. The GH5S did bring us dual native ISO at 400 and 2500 ISO, and the GH6 proudly boasts dual native ISO as well. I did see a fair amount of noise in the image in V-Log, not sure exactly what that's about, but I'm chalking it up to the fact that we're still dealing with an M43 sensor, which is susceptible to noise at higher ISOs. Many of us were hoping that Panasonic would be moving to a phase detect autofocus system over the contrast-based AF that's been the standard in all Lumix series cameras. Unfortunately, this is not the case with the GH6 and the autofocus system remains similar to its predecessors. Panasonic does say that autofocus processing is three times faster in the GH6 and there have been some other changes to the autofocus operation, such as the ability to use the joystick to move the reticle around. You can now set a limit range so autofocus is more responsive within a predetermined distance. The zone autofocus reticle has been changed to allow you to see more what's underneath, and autofocus exposure can now be toggled off in multi-metering modes to avoid undesired exposure shifts. 
A couple of firsts for the Lumix line have been added to the GH6. The first being the fact that the GH6 can use dot cube format LUTs in camera for image overlay preview. In addition to that, four channel audio has been added so the GH6 can record two channels of ambient sound via the built-in body mic while simultaneously recording two separate channels of audio from the Panasonic DMW XLR1 audio hot shoe adapter. Another really nice feature add is that with the slightly larger body comes room to allow the flip out LCD to rotate more freely when you have an HDMI or a USB cable plugged into the side. You've now got a record button on the front of the camera as well as a dedicated record button on the top, plus the ability to trigger recording via the shutter. Some more notables, you can use the Lumix app to control the GH6 remotely. There are tally lamps on the front and rear of the camera. You can also use a USB cable to supply power to the camera while charging the battery at the same time. And you will need CF Express memory cards to handle all of that high bitrate goodness. There are two card slots, one CF Express and one SD card slot, which when the codecs allow can be used for simultaneous and or relay record. There's also a timecode port on the front of the camera to accept a BNC conversion adapter allowing for timecode sync. This is a great ad for studio and multi-camera operations. We've also got some things to look forward to in a future firmware update. Now we don't exactly know when these are coming, but Panasonic says we can expect DCI 4K ProRes recording, full HD Apple ProRes recording as well, direct recording to a USB solid state drive, that's awesome. 4K 120p video output during live view, showing you exactly what that slow motion will look like slowed down. And this is a big one, 4K 120 raw video output to a Ninja V over HDMI. Overall, these are some massive upgrades to a camera system that's been a low budget cinema darling for years. And I think that many will agree that the GH6 checks off a ton of requested boxes that videographers, event filmmakers, and cinematographers have been asking for for a long time. While I certainly enjoyed getting to play with the GH6, let us know what you think in the comments, and there's a lot to cover about this camera. I'm sure more information is going to be coming out soon. Be sure to smash the like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell so you get notified of all the great video and product announcements here from Adorama. I'm Rob Adams. Till next time.